When your house has the right size, shape, and location, but not the right character for your family, it's time for a rustic renovation. That is so beautiful. I've been helping homeowners improve their home for a lot of years. They think it's intimidating, but it actually can be a lot of fun. And we're here to help. Good job, look at there. Dad's the expert, but I've learned a few things along the way. Practical, realistic home improvement information is what today's homeowner is all about. At the edge of this cotton field is a subdivision where Trent and Crystal Gatlin live with their three daughters, Madeline, Reese, and Hayden. <laughs> She's so cute. I'm a little outnumbered. <laughs> Even the dog's a girl. <laughs> Every house in this neighborhood's kind of similar. And so I think it's amazing to take a great floor plan, but make it your own. And we like to do it on a dime. <laughs> I dream it and it may be totally crazy but he entertains me and does it for me. Yeah, Crystal dreams it up, and I've got about two weeks to finish. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. I mean, I don't like to let things linger, so I, you know. He's a doer. I mean, I'm a really good idea person, but I'm not the best handy girl. <laughs> so for him to have like a real man to like come and like help him out, and I think it's cool. He can maybe even learn some stuff from Mr. Danny. Okay, tell us all about it. Well, we've lived here for almost a year and we've been fixing some things up, but we would really love some more custom pieces and some character in our house. So the mantle is, it's okay, but my parents actually had a maple cut down from their property and had a spare mantle. So they gave it to All us. Right, it's great. so big Good. too. Probably 200 pounds of maple. It's gonna take a team. Yeah, I'm hoping that we can maybe do some extra cool things with that piece of wood. And uh -huh. then, I don't know, that tile's so basic. So we yeah. just want to make this house look more like us. I want it to look like Pinterest, but feel like home. If you take the ceramic out, you got to put something back in its place. My favorite is brick. Oh. I love brick. And maybe do like, do you know how to like German schmear? Have y'all ever done uh, something like oh that? Yeah. I've never done anything like that, so it scares yeah. me. What about the walls? She came up with an idea of putting wood on the wall, uh -huh. kind of like this area right in here where we hang up our oh, backpacks. Yeah, very nice. So putting that maybe something up to the like ceiling. That. Yeah. Then we have this <clears throat> odd little nook what here. Is, what is that? It's like a little bandstand. I call it a place to collect dust. Yeah, there's no telling the dust is up there. <laughs> maybe like help tie it in so it makes sense, so it's not just a hole up in the yeah. ceiling. Sure. Yes. Okay. You know, eventually we would like to put some shiplap on the ceiling, mm -hmm. but we need to start out with like a wood beam. You know, it's really made for it because look how they offset the ceiling fan and that light fixture okay. is offset oh, wow. just yeah. enough for a beam. That and, would be amazing. Um, and, and also you can see the drywall starting to bubble up there a little bit. It always, yeah. mm -hmm. always does that when you have that kind of scene. Well, it sounds good. Why don't you show us that piece of maple? I'm yes. curious about that. We'll need a cabinet maker with a big bandsaw to cut support corbels from this slab. We can have corbels made? Yeah. I'm so excited about that. So when we return to start work, the first chore is cutting the mantle to length. How long have you had this? Uh, I've been a couple months now. Oh, okay. How long have you had that square? <laughs> More than that. <laughs> Oh man, that smells like old shop class there. Nice. So we can lay out the corbel design before we send it off. We're trying to match a picture. We're trying different buckets and you know, we start with a five gallon bucket. Seems like it needs a little more meat. Needs more meat in there. And then all of a sudden Danny's like, I don't think it's a perfect circle that we're needing. So we're free forming it. And then all of a sudden there it is. Yeah, I think that's gonna look good. Mm-hmm. Is that what you, you, you came up with that design? Freestyle. Ah, yeah. okay, it looks pretty see? good. See the arc? Look, see? It looks like a dinosaur. Probably run it by crystal, huh? Oh, you darn right. <laughs> <laughs> now we're ready to clear out the room. Here, grab this uh, the rug and I'll lift oh, okay. this up. Yeah, that's what's under that rug. <laughs> Ooh like the beach. <laughs> they take the whole sandbox from the playset and just bring it on in because they're sweet like that. You're not working very hard. She's sweeping the floor. 
If you're a do-it-yourselfer, you'll need lots of different clamps, various sizes and various types, but the problem is most clamps don't have protective pads on the jaws. And even if they came with protection originally, they often crack and fall off, you lose them, and, and then you have this edge that'll damage the workpiece. If you're wondering why you need to protect the workpiece, take a look at this. Here's a seat clamp, and you can see the jaw. It damaged the wood, it made a depression right in the workpiece. So you want to avoid that. And one way is to go out and buy these peel and stick pads. These are felt pads that are meant to go on the bottom of furniture legs. And all you do is pop one off and peel off the protective backing. That exposes the adhesive. And then just put it right on the clamp itself. It just sticks right on. Of course, you're going to, to put one there as well. And for clamps like this that have square rectangular jaws, you can buy sheets of felt. There's one large sheet with a peel and stick backing. Just cut it to size. Here's one I cut earlier. And just stick it right on there. And again, you're going to, to put it on both. Now, when you go to clamp something, you can clamp as hard as you want, and you're not going to damage the workpiece. We're helping Crystal and Trent add some rustic charm to their family room, and that starts with a new mantle. Maybe just the caulking holding this thing on, I hope. Yeah, I hope so, because I think we're supposed to save this thing. When we knew that we were going to do something with the fireplace, get a different one, I was like, that would be really fun to put in the girls' room. Well, she said, though, that it didn't really matter. She said that. Yeah, she, <laughs> I didn't hear any sincerity in that <laughs> statement. I just thought that would be really neat. They can make their own Christmas stockings at Christmas. And I love creating things that stand out to my kids. And I was kind of thinking that could be one of those. There we go. She'll be so happy. A happy crystal's probably a good thing. Yeah, brownie points right here. Just give me the word when it's time to get a piece of <laughs> We're not saving the tiles to round, so we can be a little more ruthless with it. Out in the garage, the ladies are about to prime the plywood we'll use to make our faux shiplap. And I'm hoping if we do a good coverage with the primer, then we will only have one coat of the finished paint. That's perfect. So let's try that out. Do I need one of those fancy things? Are you expecting a baby? Well, Dad, I couldn't hold it in any longer. But I'm expecting my third baby, and I'm very excited about it. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. <laughs> so I'm doing a little extra layer of protection. Your baby number three is going to be your jokester. Dad's the third child. That explains a lot. I'm a third child, too. <laughs> um, what will I do with all of this work we have to do during that two weeks you'll be off? Two weeks! <laughs> You and Trent are totally first kids. Yeah, that's funny. Y'all are so good and responsible and stuff. <laughs> well, like we normally do, we can make quite a mess in a short amount of time, but what I'm doing here is I had to remove a good bit of drywall so that I can add some additional framing to help support the heavy maple mantle that we'll have in here. The corbels that we're having made by our cabinet maker is gonna go right in here, so I need something to attach it to because it is a very, very heavy piece of wood. All right, Crystal, the boards that you have in your little mudroom area are six inches. Yes. Do you want to match that? I do. On the fireplace? I do. Okay, so we're going to adjust the saw. First step, leave it unplugged while you're messing with the saw blade. You just push the board up against the fence, mm -hmm. and that way they'll all be uniform. You'll be over here okay. helping me feed it through all right. nice and straight. Okay. I was pulling it away. Chelsea was pushing it too. I like to go in away because my hands are getting away from that blade. <laughs> so I was down for that job. <laughs> it's almost like the boys did it, but the girls did it. But better. Now she's not going to change her mind on the height of this, is she? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. He's the one that's not decisive. <laughs> What do you want to eat for dinner? I don't know. <laughs> he takes longer to make decisions than I do. While Trent and I continue blocking, Chelsea and Crystal get ready to install the shiplap up in that little nook. <laughs> Are you scared of heights? Oh, yeah. Well, it's a little late to be finding out about that now. I'm tall enough. I don't need to be on a ladder. <laughs> Can we turn some music on? You want to dance a little? <laughs> yeah. That would be so much fun. <laughs> like trying to hold on to this like it's like got grips on it. <laughs> well, I could tell she had a genuine fear of heights. And if anything had happened, I'd feel really, really bad. You know. But that's not going to stop you from messing with her, is it? No, 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 no. I was, I was prepared to catch her if I had to. Oh, 
and I had the couch pretty well strategically positioned. That it... <laughs> While Chelsea and Crystal are nailing up boards in the bandstand, Trent and I have covered up the framing on the fireplace and start installing the split brick surround. We're using construction adhesive to secure the bricks in a running bond pattern. Early the next morning, Crystal and Chelsea start preparing the one by sixes for our faux beam by applying wood conditioner. What is a conditioner? I've never heard of that before. Well, because this pine is so porous, this mm -hmm. will just help the stain soak in so it'll have a nice even stain instead of splotchy. Inside, Trent and I are finishing the vertical part of the brick surround, and Trent has a great idea to use pieces of rope as spacers between the bricks. The next time I do this and use rope, I'm going to say it was my idea. So how many tricks have you stolen from homeowners over the years? Oh, none. <laughs> none at all. This would be the first one. But I think this might be the first one. <laughs> okay. Because I like this. Well, that's pretty good, even though when you get ready to go skiing this, this summer, you're not going to have a ski rope to ski <laughs> with. But what a great idea for a spacer. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. As a DIYer myself, I am always looking for projects that are easy to install, durable, and not so expensive. And if you're in the market for new flooring, look right here. Now this is a new flooring system by LifeProof. Now this is their rigid core vinyl plank flooring, and it looks like hardwood floor. It even feels like hardwood floor because it's got that scraped feel, but it's not, it's made out of vinyl. Now I've got the three different sizes that it offers too to kind of get that more authentic wood feel for your flooring. But what I like about it is, first of all, it's very lightweight because again, it's made out of vinyl. But if you look here on the back, it's got closed cell foam as an underlayment, so that aids in soundproofing it. But because it's got a PVC core, it's very rigid and very durable. So the installation is also easy because all you need is a utility knife, a pull bar, and a tapping block. And you'll have this floor in no time. Much of Trent and Crystal's rustic renovation centers on the fireplace, but while the new brick surround is drying, Chelsea and Crystal are staining the outer skin of our fake beam. We want to go with the green, okay, and then we'll come back and wipe out the excess. It's a little colder outside than is ideal for stain and paint to dry, so we're keeping the garage door closed and turning up the heat to help the stain set just right. So Trent, to build the beam we're talking about, this is like the slope of the ceiling that you have up there now. What we'll do is we'll take a two by six, it'll be real important that we get that thing nice and level. Then, you see I've got those ripped down. The reason for that, I'm gonna take these two befores and we'll put it in just like that. That way, the one by sixes, they stained in there, will hang right down to there. Put a one by six on the bottom and the other one down this side. Yeah. Okay, cool. Makes sense. Then we'll run screws up through this, this way into the rafter, and that way up into that, and it'll look like it's always been there. After we rip the 2x4s down, we fasten them to the 2x6 with long screws before we move the whole thing inside. We measure and mark the joist location so that we can start the screws into the beam before we lift it to the ceiling. In theory, putting together most of the beam framework was just the way to go. Okay, we're on our own. Oh. It'd be almost impossible to do it any other way because everything has to be flush and edges matched up. Okay, we gotta regroup here. The wood was a little heavier than we anticipated. <laughs> that really drew it up. <laughs> but once one end is level and secure, we adjust the alignment and level of the other end. So the first section goes up pretty easily. The second piece, well, it's a different story. There was a little bit of a reach there for Danny. Danny's drilling the beam into the ceiling and we don't hear the impact engage. And boom. All I could see is that glass cooktop right below yeah. there. And I thought I was about to buy me a cooktop <laughs> that I couldn't use. After that scare, we work a little slower, but finally get the frame secured to the ceiling. Meanwhile, Chelsea and Crystal have started installing the faux ship lap on the fireplace. Next. Using nickels to space the boards for more effect. We didn't want any of the end grain of the boards to show on either side of the fireplace, so we decided to 45 them. It's a little extra work, but that just looks 
So nice, wrapped around that corner right there. It does, it looks so finished. But we're at the end of the day, so Crystal and Trent have a little homework to do. So y'all feel comfortable in uh, continuing the workload here a little bit? A little date night. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of shiplap that can go up. And try to go ahead and run all of that up the fireplace and grab the paintbrush if you want to do an all-nighter. You got plenty of energy? Yes, sir. Okay, it's all yours. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a crummy date night, but uh, you know we made the best of it in a few hours. You're on the last few pieces and you're just like, wow, I'm glad I didn't give up. <laughs> The next morning, our first chore is wrapping the beam. In some places, we have to squeeze the frame together with clamps to keep it flush with the stained horizontal board. But once that piece is secured, the side pieces go up fairly easily. As they do, we realize the edges of the unstained side will be seen, so there's a little touch-up to do before we apply the sealer. So to do the German schmear that you want, mm -hmm. we're just going to use basic mortar and you wet the bricks just to keep the mortar from drying too oh, fast. Okay. That way we have time to like play with it. Yes. And there's several different ways that you can apply it, mm -hmm. but I thought it'd be the most fun to use our hands. I like so that that's idea. How we have the gloves. Finger paint. You know, it's like when I start something I've never done before, it's like so scary. I start going, oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> but then like you start wiping it away and I love the creativity and the messiness of it. If I had known you were going to take so much off the bricks, we could have mixed up a lot less mortar. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> no, it looks really good. We have our corbels back from the cabinet shop, so while the ladies wrap up the surround, Trent and I pre-drill them for the five and a half inch screws we'll use to install them on the wall. Perfect. And finally, the last piece of our rustic renovation, the maple mantle. Look at that grain. It's just how I always yeah. dreamed it would look. That's perfect. Wow. That is so beautiful. Is your dad going to be happy? My parents are going to flip. It's so beautiful. <laughs> you made my daddy proud today, Mr. Danny. <laughs> Crystal and Trent have a beautiful home, and the family room was already attractive. It just didn't suit the style and unique personality of their family. So we started with the focal point of the room, the fireplace. The split bricks we used for the surround brought in plenty of rustic charm, while Chelsea's German smear finish added a touch of modern design and brightness to the surface. The faux shiplap that we wrapped around the fireplace makes it unapologetic about its role as the focal point in the room. And the simple corbel and beam maple mantle adds both warmth and sentimental value to the space. The new beam overhead is simple and clean, but it helps balance the room by drawing some attention to the enormous vaulted ceiling. And the shiplap in that nook seems to give that area a little more purpose. Plus, we only spent a little over $400 for all the materials to complete this project. They couldn't have turned out any better. I mean, it was just, yeah, totally amazing. Yeah. We feel so blessed and so overwhelmed. I mean, it's better than even what was in my mind. I mean, everything about it is so perfect. Yeah. It, I can't believe we get to keep it. The hardest part is just getting started. I got to watch Danny not even hesitate and just jump in. And I, I hope to take that away from this. You know, you just gotta get it started and, and go from there and it'll all work out. You know, a lot of times homeowners have a really hard time visualizing how they want the inside of their house to look. Well, that wasn't a problem at all with Crystal. She knew exactly what she wanted. All Trent and her needed was just a little bit of help and a little bit of push in order to get it all done. And we're really proud of how we did just a few simple things and completely changed the look of this room. And along the way, I hope we've been able to provide you a little bit of confidence that you can use at your house. I'm Danny Lipford. Thanks so much for being with us here on Today's Homeowner. With your camera up like that, something got on that lens. Is that your cleaning cloth? Yeah. <laughs> Cost me a lot of money to be that ugly. There's holes in the yard, y'all. Be sure to join us next week when we transform a blank slate backyard into a great outdoor living space for a young family. So we needed something to just put there so I can pry against the wall. I got Chelsea's cell phone. I hope she doesn't see that she's out there painting. She's not.